So joining us now to discuss all of this, Stephanie Tatchy is with us. Morning, Morning. Steph. It was an interesting much. weekend mm. for the press relating to this story. I think a lot of us, you and I included, mm -hmm. I have a slight care factor of nil, mm -hmm. but it continues to make the headlines. Why? It does, because this is a story that keeps on giving, and it's mostly down to Philip Schofield by courting the press. At the moment, he's homeless. ITV don't want him anymore. So the natural places for him to go to is the BBC and The Sun to try to tell his side of the story. All week long, everybody and their mother and their cat have had their say on what happened with Philip Schofield and this runner. So what he's trying to do now is damage control. He's trying to protect this morning because the show's been thrown into disrepute based on his actions. Holly now, people are asking how much did she know about this affair? How does she know? They've been co-presenters for 14 years. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to protect this brand that he says he loves, but the main fact is he lied. And if he didn't lie, we wouldn't be even here talking about this now. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say, I, I thought the Sun interview was was OK. I mean, mm -hmm. he genuinely seemed broken. He's he clearly is. not in great shape. No. And look, I've got so many emails on my show from viewers saying, be careful, we don't want this guy to enter such a dark place yeah. that, that he does something appalling. Mm -hmm. However, all mm -hmm. of that said, I had very little sympathy once I watched the BBC interview. Yeah. Because that's the moment where he played the homophobia card. Yes. Claiming that this was an outrage and it was overcooked because mm -hmm. he's a gay man. Well, no. no. If it had been... A straight presenter and a young girl. I it think would have it, been more outrage. It would have been worse. Um, plus the mental health thing. I mean, clearly, you know, that is a concern. But do we really buy the victim narrative? I don't think we do. To be honest, I think Philip came quite narcissistic. I think, you know, in that interview, it was so woe is me. He contradicted himself with many statements that he came out with. Even when you're talking about it, you realise there's actually more of his story to come out in terms of him being gay. He wouldn't, he wouldn't you know, address whether he's had more lovers or not. So well, his BBC mm. interview was very defensive, wasn't it? Mm. And yeah, I thought it was, was aggressive. I thought mm. the son, he was humble, but for, for the BBC, he denied that this morning is a toxic workplace. Yeah. Uh, is he calling Dr. Range a liar? Is he calling Dan Wooten a liar? Is he calling all of those producers who get flashbacks and a shiver down their spine when they hear the This Morning theme mm. tune because they had such a horrible experience. Well, Mark, ITV have been quite arrogant so far. Like, they're obviously going to be facing... ITV executives will be going to Parliament on Wednesday to answer questions about duty of care. And even the editor of the show, Martin Frizzell, they seem quite confident that ITV are going to come out looking good out of this. So maybe, on Philip's defence, he thinks there hasn't been that toxic culture, but we cannot deny all of the stories that have come up from people such as Eamon Holmes and Dan Wooten. Mm. I mean... Martin Frizzell said, you know, scores are being set yes. in the responses to this. I mean, I have my own personal score with this morning because mm -hmm. when I was going on during the COVID times and the lockdowns and everything, I, you know, I, they, they were, they kind of ambushed me every time yeah. on air. But I was realistic that they're making a programme which is looking for headlines, right? Mm -hmm. There are people who've worked on that show, just to give a little balance here, for many years, 25 years and more. You know, some of the people behind the scenes, lovely individuals. And I wouldn't want this idea of a toxic yeah. pr programme to actually be about reflecting on them, because the mm -hmm. people that I always work with were lovely. Not, lovely. It always comes from the top, doesn't but it? But cliquey, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Cliquey as presenters, absolutely. Very much so. Mm -hmm. That was always the feeling in that in, you're either on the team or you're well, not. I, I think when he denied mm -hmm. that the culture at this morning is toxic, when he said that's not the case, case it's all flowers and honey and we yeah. have tea in the morning. <laughs> um, for me, that was the Meghan Markle moment. That was mm -hmm. the point where one untruth caused everything else he said to cease to be credible in oh, my really? view. I think Philip had rose-tinted glasses on during this whole interview and during this whole case as well, because he's very much seen it from his perspective. He's the one that's been sitting on this life for three years or so. Mm. So in his head, he's done nothing wrong, you know, in terms of adding to this toxic culture that has been building up at this morning. Top showbiz agent uh, mm. Jonathan Shalit. Yeah reckons there's a way back for Schofield. Do you well, think that's true? I think we're going to get a book from Philip Schofield. Yeah. In terms of TV, he admits his career is over. I don't know which broadcast is going to touch him with a barge pole, um, but in terms maybe of him... Maybe one of those shopping channels? Maybe. You see, he hasn't... I, 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 but, but I am a bit... Bad. 
baffled because he hasn't done anything illegal. He hasn't done anything Correct. illegal. But it's and the questions, Bev. It's yeah. the questions that are, you know, the questions of grooming, the questions of this unnamed runner. Why has he been able to move from this morning to loose women in such a swift succession? That doesn't happen for normal TV folk. You also have pictures together with Holly, Philip and this guy. So how didn't she know? Oh, There's just it's, oh, it's the questions. I find that very difficult to believe. I mean, everybody knew. Yeah, mm. I, I think I, I so. knew. Like, mm. everybody knew. We didn't... Not to say we knew the detail, but everybody knew there was a boy... A young man... Mm -hmm. Not a boy, that's not fair. A young man working on that show who had an unusual friendship with Felix. Mm. Smith. It's mm. the worst kept secret uh, in showbiz. I bumped... Speaking of showbiz, bumped into showbiz legend Christopher Biggins, who was in the building for breakfast. Oh, yeah. what, what a guy, what a legend. And this man said to me, why is she going back to this morning? Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that brand is... I mean, I think it's toast, really, but it's certainly tainted, isn't mm -hmm. it? Why does she associate because herself with has, that programme? Because she has to be last man standing. Like, she there is victory in sitting on that sofa without him. It's a very powerful message. She's not given into cancel culture, but Holly's brand has already been tarnished. It's been tarnished since Qgate, and this just adds more salt to the wound. If she steps down, it's her saying, actually, I've done something guilty, and I'm guilty by association. Right. I, for one, I've, I have stopped buying her dresses, I've got to say. Oh, since, Mark, since why? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the candles as well. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm just going back to Gwyneth now. Uh, you know, it's funny, because, of course, she has, got, she has got this brand. People may not know this, but in the last few years, she set up this online brand like Gwyneth Paltrow's yeah. group, like like the brand that Meghan Markle had, mm -hmm. no one can remember the name of that one, uh, before she married Harry. And actually, I quite like it. I've said this before, mm. but I think in a way that's what's happened with Holly. She wants to move out from his shadow. She wants to do her own yeah. thing. She's got great management. Her husband is her manager, isn't Big he? TV executive. You know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a product and it's a mm -hmm. business and she's entrepreneurial and I think she'll probably do all right from well, it. But I don't think she'll stay there very long. No, time, she's, I think now it's out of Holly's hands because during summer she won't be on the screens. And I think that's when ITV bosses are really going to have to sit down and think, are we going to rebrand this show? Because I think now the show can't be the same because now they're going to have to vet anyone who's coming on in case anyone wants to attack Holly or talk about the filth thing. So it's not going to be business as usual. And it's going to take a while for viewers to get used to this new normal. ITV have already washed their hands of Philip, got rid of pictures of him in the wall. So... Yeah, I mean, that, that happens every time I leave an organisation. <laughs> <That's laughs> so, including TV a few online it. radio stations. <laughs> but but uh, the other interesting thing is ITV <laughs> bosses being grilled yes. by, by a House of Commons select committee. Uh, mm. Dan Wooden, okay, who's very much owned this story brilliantly yeah. alongside Eamon Holmes and others. Yeah. Uh, He's suggesting that the ultra-woke boss, Karen mm -hmm. McCall, should step down. I what think, do you think? I think she said, I think this is going to be a very defining moment, not just for the ITV, ITV, but the whole of the media landscape in terms of duty of care. We don't want to be fostering this kind of industry where we're having protecting Jimmy Savills and co's for decades to come. Mm -hmm. Clearly, ITV missed the mark on many times with this Philip Schofield case, and someone needs to pay for it. He's gone, but what's happening behind the scenes? OK.